The love of Christ be with you. Welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church. This is the day the Lord has made for us to worship God in joy and gladness. We are so happy you are here with us in our sanctuary. And those of you joining us in your sacred space online this morning, we're happy to have you. We're having some technical challenges, so we're broadcasting this morning from uh, the iPad, our alternate uh, streaming service today because we just had a backup to occur <laughs> on all of our software. But we are still here. We're grateful that you're here to worship with us this day. Before we begin our worship, we're going to share in our announcements and lift up prayer concerns and joys. I invite any of you who have updates to share those at, those time, at this time as well. You'll see that there are several announcements printed in our bulletin immediately following worship today. The church's nominating committee will be meeting to select nominees for the next elder class. I believe it'd be 26, 24, 25, yep, all right. So that will be immediately following worship. We ask you throughout our worship today to be prayerful for that process as we uh, select those who will be nominated to our church session who will ultimately bring nominees to you as the body, as membership. To approve the new elders to our church session. So we'll be prayerful for that. We're going to have fun on this campus today, even after worship. We're going to have fun in worship. And then we're having a trunk or treat, trunk and treat. That's going to start at 4 p.m. here at the Greg Center, just across the parking lot. Please come and have fun. We will have festive uh, occasions, beautiful decoration, lots of good candy, hot dog and chili. How about that, Manya? That's our favorite. Hot dogs and chili and fixings will be a part of this. I've got a big old pot of chili. Should I bring my chili? I can do it, can I? You already have enough chili, probably. I'll bring mine for dessert. Put a little chocolate on top of my chili. Did that work? Okay, so we're going to have that today at 4 p.m. Y'all come and be a part of it. It's going to be fun, be a blast, and uh, we'll share in the love with these young people of excitement, laughter, candy, and we'll see who wins the decoration competition and their costume competition. That'll be today at 4 p.m. Our Journey Bible Study Week pre-recorded last week. This week, we're going to start just a little early. We're going to begin the uh, journey Bible study at 5.45, so set your clock back 15 minutes on our start time for this week's virtual Bible study. Hope you can be a part of that. The Bell Choir got off to an amazing start, I think, last week. They sounded wonderfully. I got to hear a little bit of it. Sounded so good, they said, we don't need to practice anymore. No, they are taking off this week because of the uh, trunk and treat, and we're also not having choir practice this week as a result of the trunk and treat. But they'll both be in, back in action next Sunday for practice, as will your church session be meeting immediately after worship next Sunday. All righty, I love this beautiful floral arrangement. Shirley, Lamont, thank you all for sharing uh, this to help us celebrate the beautiful life of Ray Gillard. What a gift he was to many of us and certainly to his precious mama. We're grateful that Ray can adorn our worship, his memory can today. Thank y'all for sharing those lovely flowers. Okay. Are there other announcements we need to mention today? People are bringing in their pantry supplies. Grateful to have those. It's filling up. So we celebrate your generosity and being a part of our mission emphasis here at RPC through the many ways we serve our community and the church at large through Christ's love. Our mission goal this month is uh, not only the food, uh, excuse me, the RPC uh, pantry, which we're cooperating with the Department of Human Services, and Jenna's providing leadership with that. Our mission emphasis for the whole month is the Hunger Grant, the Presbyterian Hunger Grant, where we partner with churches throughout North Mississippi to provide assistance to those who need a little extra nourishment physically and even spiritually 
in their lives. So thank you for giving. You all are invited to share a portion of your gift, whatever portion you want it to be, to your monthly mission Go. Every dime of that goes from this church, out of these walls, into the community out there. Thank you all for being the church. Okay, let's uh, take a look at our prayer list and lift up uh, joys and concerns at this time. A joy that I have is that little Mason Rogers has come home. So what a beautiful picture he had on Facebook in his three-month big old bundle of joy. After uh, It's amazing the care that they can give to these infant children in need. So we celebrate with his family, his uh, restoration to good health. Uh, are there others this morning that we want to add or have updates to? Great. Glad to hear that. Thank you for sharing, Linda. That's great. Are there others? Kathy and I are going to Houston Tuesday and coming back Wednesday night. Wow. That's going to be a whirlwind tour, isn't it? Prayers for both of you, Kathy. And we're grateful that uh, y'all get to make that journey together. You're in great hands there. Are there others? Yes, absolutely. Yes, Amy. Wow, that's encouraging, isn't it? Good. Thank you, Ann, and good friend of James and others. We've been prayerful. For Gunner, and so glad to hear that. Are there others? Okay, friends, once again, it is a joy to be with you in the house of the Lord. Let us together worship our God. share with you our call to worship from Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Friends, join me in responding to that call to worship. By standing with us and proclaiming in praise the glory of our God as we share in hymn number 293.
I do want to mention one other announcement. We will be having a new members class, either on potentially the 5th or the 12th, a workshop from 3 to 5 p.m. So let me or Miss Lynn know if you have a preference on either of those days, if you're considering or are a recent member of RPC. Just be a one-day workshop from 3 to 5. Let's continue with our worship as we transition now from our praise to our petition for God to forgive us through his grace and for his glory. Will you join with me as we in unison offer our prayers of confession? Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, Cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. As far or as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Friends, believe this good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Stand with me as we celebrate our forgiveness and proclaim our God's glory in song. first reading comes from the book of Exodus. If you'd like to follow along, you can find this in the Old Testament portion of your Bible on page 80. I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 33, beginning at verse 12, and then continuing through the end of the chapter. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. 
Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand until I've passed away. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
we become like them, humble as a child, we can't even enter your kingdom in the door. So we pray your blessing on our young disciples and the ministry we share together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Y'all are amazing. Such a gift to our worship. We can just go home now, can't we? But I want to preach so badly. Will y'all let me just say a few words? Oh, my goodness. This is why we assemble in the house of the Lord. This is why we set apart this day as holy, isn't it? To proclaim the glory of our God, to worship him together, and to share the good news. Wow. Thank you, choir. Thank you to each of you who made my life better by being a part of our worship community. I pray it makes your journey better, too. Let's now transition to our third lesson of Scripture today. It's going to be a reading from the Gospel of Mark, excuse me, Matthew in chapter 22. We're nearing the end of our journey of Matthew, and uh, we're, we're still, he's transitioning, or he's made his journey down into the temple, as we spoke of. He's began this great discourse and dialogue with the teachers, the scribes, and the Pharisees within the temple setting. So that's a little background as we hear this story. Uh, our reading today will begin at chapter 15, and we'll continue through verse 22. So as we prepare to hear God's words, let us together ask God to help us to hear more clearly by petitioning the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Oh God, your word is life. We ask you to breathe life into us now. For you are the word made flesh, your scripture tells us. You also proclaim in scripture, God, that you are the light of the world. So we ask you to open our eyes. Help us to see more clearly. Come, O oh Holy Spirit. Let the words of this mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you. For you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ we pray. A reading from Matthew's Gospel in chapter 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. So Jesus finds himself in a no-win situation. Have you ever been there where there's not a good choice to be made? Manya and I have watched a series recently. Anytime I recommend something, you don't have to take it up. And please don't judge me if they say stuff on there that shouldn't be said in the house of worship, okay? But we were watching this series recently titled The Diplomat. And in an exchange that uh, the, one of the diplomats, the ambassador, was having with the President of the United States, she said, a wise person once told me that a decision never makes it to the President's desk unless it's 49-51% one way or the other. Wow. What a tough predicament to be in. When there are no easy decisions, do you ever find yourself in that way? Whether it be a family decision, 
career, faith, relationships, where you just don't have a way out that is seamless or easy. You see, in our text today, as Jesus says, in the words of Matthew, sought to be entrapped by the words of the Pharisees, he gives us, I think, guidance and lessons to respond when we find ourselves in what the world would present to us as no-win situations. They ask him, they pose the question, should the tax be given to Caesar or not? And you see, if Jesus were to answer, understanding the, the tensions, right? We're in uh, the holy city. We're in the temple. Jesus had transitioned. So you have devout people of faith. You have those who were in cahoots with Rome. And you had those like Simon the Zealot, one of his inner circle friends, who didn't even want to pay taxes, who wanted nothing to do in cooperation with Rome. So if he says, sure, you need to pay the tax. Well, he upsets, he disenfranchises, he separates himself from those who are com completely against the occupation of their home. But then, if he says, no, we don't pay the tax, well, he can be seen as treason. He would have been arrested, facing almost sure capital punishment. Jesus responds in this no-win situation with more than words but actions. Isn't that a lesson for us? So often, I don't know about you, my words can get me in trouble. It's hard to say when you're a person that speaks for a living, right? And I heard someone say recently, we need to, we need to engage these and this. And probably this before we engage this. Good words of advice, right? Engage our head and our heart and our ears before we engage our mouth. It's so easy, isn't it, just to shoot off. In this world where there's so much talking, so much anger, and so much like the Pharisees, those who want to present us with no-win situations. Jesus responds with actions, not insults. He says, bring to me the coin. And in this response by Jesus, he forces those who pose the question to answer their own question, Rosemary. He says, give to me the coin, and guess what? They had the coin. They were saying themselves, we understand that the tax has to be paid because we have it on our person. And then he says, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, give to God the things that are God's, as if to say, everything is God. I shared in our Bible study this week. He, he seems to be saying the words that I heard proclaimed by a great teacher of mine once. The truth is to understand this. We should not be driven by the almighty dollar. We should remember that it's truly the almighty's dollar. Gift God is his response. Sure, there's a portion that we must give to the world. There's a portion that we give to those around us. But give God what's in our heart. You see, I think that's the essence, as Lynn spoke of in her Bible study portion this week, in that letter to the church in Thessalonica, where the call for Paul to those people of faith was to turn from idols it's not just turning from idols, it's turning to God, right? And those idols, I heard it, I want to I look here on my phone, I'll put my notes there on this one. This definition I'd heard a scholar share about idolatry. You know, we pray about that certainly in the 
Ten Commandments, and, and we wrestle with what does it mean to embrace idols. This definition says an idol is anything more important to you than God. I like that. Anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God. And anything that you seek to give what only God can give. See, Jesus is reminding you. It's not the dollar. Or who we even give it to, that portion we have, is to remember it will never sustain us, as will not anything in the world that we try to replace with what only God can do. It seems to me, too, he's making that call. Of that great commandment. We'll hear him share those words later. In Matthew, in this exchange, I may even preach on it here in a week or two, where they say to him, what's the greatest commandment, right? And he says those words that are familiar to many of us. Love the Lord your God with what? With all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. He's saying engage this. Engage this. Engage these before we engage that. Love the Lord. And we won't worry and be so consumed with the things that tempt us as idolatry. See, when I get in trouble, that's, I think that's where idols tempt any of us. That's why addictions run rampant, because they give us a little something, right? Right? But they never fill the God hole. The hole that only our God can. They always leave us empty. You know, as I'm thinking about idols or addictions, those things that tempt us as any broken people in need of restoration. So I was wrestling with those this morning. Those things that we cling to that are idols, they don't have our best interest in. Have you ever thought about that? There's not an emotional, relational connection. It runs right the opposite of the relationship God wants to have with us. Did you hear Jennifer's portion that she read in Exodus? God's purpose was to have a relationship with the people of Israel. He sent his son as a savior so he could have what? Relationship with us forever through his grace. What he gives us is always for our best interests. Idols give us what's for ultimately our destruction. There's no emotional, spiritual, personal, relational connection when we entrust in idols as it were, paying the taxes or monies that the Pharisees were wrestling with or giving our full heart to God. Grateful that we began our season here yesterday in this month of Coats for Kids ministry that we partner with with Ripley Rotary. Chris has played an important part of that for years. Chris Marcellus, Norris Owl, and Bobby, many of you Rotarians that are here, and Price, and members of this church, and now new members of this church. I understand. 254 coats were given away yesterday. 254 coats. Let that soak in. That's just the beginning. And oftentimes there's a little Bible verse given with those coats. A little reminder that some of these young minds may not even conceive at the time, but one day they may ask the question, why? Why did these folks over at Ripley Presbyterian Church take off on a Saturday? Why did they come and give up their free time to give me something that cost me nothing? Maybe they've come to understand that the true things of life, that 
fill us as being the hands and feet of Christ and caring for people's best interests. You see, that's what Jesus was wrestling with. In this text today, they were looking out for their best interests and trying to entrap him within their desires. My old faithful dog, Dash, I've spoken to y'all about him before. You spell it D-A-C-H, we do. That's how you spell Dachshund. He's a mini Dachshund, he was when we got him, now he's a jumbo Dachshund. And Dash, he likes to play ball. And our big lab mix, that's what she is, right, Monia? Our big lab mix, Luna likes to play ball too. And if you throw the ball, and if Dash can do it, he can run fast, fast as lightning for a Dachshund. And he'll beat Luna and get the ball, and then he takes it over there to her, but then he pulls it back. He'll stick it in her face and he'll pull it back. Y'all ever had a dog do that? They they don't really want you to get it. They just want you to want it. Isn't that the deal? Oh, aren't we that way at times? We, we don't really want to give it up. The desire to want of stuff, of our things, of our possessions. I get it, friends. I'm struggling with this just like we all are, the idols of the world around us. But what I found. What I found, Vince, is the more I give up the things of this world and entrusting them for my joy and fullness of life, then I know true joy and fullness in life. But it's when I trust God to do what only God can do, to give me the joy of giving, living, loving, the world around me through his glory that I know a joy that nothing can give. So may we go forth, friends, this day and every day filled with the knowledge of knowing that God has the best interest of each of us. He's claimed each of us not only as his creation but as his children, those who who deserve to have their name written in heaven, not because of what we've done, but because his Son and Savior embraced death that we may have life in abundance forever. Amen. Friends, let's respond in faith today by remembering as Christian people, what do we believe? We share this each week by sharing in what is called the Apostles' Creed. It's a reminder to us that as these beliefs began our faith in the early centuries of the church, they are still held true even today. So let us together stand and remember with the apostles that were before us what makes us Christian people. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let's continue responding by knowing the joy now of giving of ourselves in one way by sharing in our tithes and our offerings.
offer our praise. We have indeed been in the house of worship today. We thank you for your presence, O Holy Spirit. May you inspire us to continue to be your light and love in this community, to be proclaimers of your good news, your grace, your love eternal. We ask your blessing upon the gifts that we brought to this place as they go forth in your name and in your witness. We pray for our nation. We ask for healing in our land. And we pray especially for those impacted so severely by the conflict in Israel and Palestine. We pray for those in harm's way in Ukraine and Russia. We ask that you bring peace and healing to earth. We pray, O oh God, celebrating the joys in our lives and asking you to carry even more fully the hardships and sorrows, the discernment, the sicknesses. Will you, O oh God, perform miracles of grace beyond what we even know to ask? We ask your blessing on our nominating committee's meeting as we select today those who will serve with us and for us more fully as your hands and feet. We pray for every person on our prayer list, those closest to us, our family, our friends, those that are spoken and unspoken, whether the needs be spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, or relational, oh God, you are the great physician. Will you bring healing and wholeness and miracles of grace? We pray for those who are closest to, yes, but those from whom we're furthest, perhaps even enemies. Will you bring healing and wholeness? Now as we pray together, the words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's share together in our hymn of response. We'll sing the first four verses of number 391. before our blessing as God's children you are holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility and patience binding all of these in love 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his grace upon you and give you peace now and forever.